Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Jacobs. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I'm the inventor of advanced soft tissue release as their specialty. I'm also a cancer survivor and I used to suffer from chronic migraines, headaches, pain and fatigue before I invented as their specialty. All right, I have uh, eight points I want to cover during this video. Uh, first, uh, I will give you a quick overview of a normal healing cycle. Second, um, I'll discuss what is uh, trigger points. Uh, third, um, I'll go over the causes of trigger point. Fourth, um, uh, I will go over the difference between uh, trigger points and uh, fibrosis. It's uh, very confusing for a lot of uh, patient and actually for healthcare provider. There's, they have a hard time to distinguish between is it fibrosis or trigger points uh, or scar tissue, so I'm going to go over that. Uh, fifth, um, I will go over the symptoms of trigger points. Um, six, I will go over which patient has uh, trigger points. Uh, seven, um, the current treatment model for uh, trigger points. And lastly, I will go over the most effective uh, solution for trigger points release. So a quick view over a normal healing cycle. As you see in the image, um, I'm gonna use external paper cut for, just for visualization, but the same process happened internally from accident, trauma, poor posture, poor body mechanic. Uh, so the first stage is inflammation. Um, with the paper cut, the, uh, when we have inflammation, uh, there is really swelling, edema, redness, uh, increased temperature, um, decreased uh, function, and increased pain. Second stage is a proliferation stage. During this stage, um, our body starts to build a scar tissue. So if our body does not build a scar tissue, it's open wound susceptible for infection. At the same time, during this stage, uh, the proliferation stage, uh, there is a cascade of event, uh, which include fascia restrictions. Uh, I went over the fascia restriction, my fascia uh, release um, in the previous video. Feel free to check that video. I went over the proper treatment for the myofascial release and also explain the fascia system. Um, I also went over the fibrosis in the previous video, how to treat it and how to evaluate it. Uh, the, 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 the goal of this video is actually to dissect the trigger points, and that's part of the proliferation stage. Um, and uh, lastly is a maturation uh, stage of the healing cycle, and that's when the body starts to clear up uh, the, uh, the fibrosis and the trigger points and the fascia restrictions. Uh, this process could take days, uh, weeks, months, or years. Uh, as we get older, this process actually um, uh, speed decreases significantly. And a lot of the patients I see in my practice, they're usually not in maturation stage because if they are in the maturation stage, I will not treat them. They already healed. So uh, today we'll just focus on the trigger points, what it is and how we treat it. So what is the trigger point? Trigger points um, are localized spot of tenderness in the muscle, in the taut band of muscle fibers. It's a hyper irritable spot in the muscle, and it's a, it's a, like a contractile tissue in the muscle that's very sensitive to touch. So what are the causes of trigger points? Um, the causes of trigger points could be from uh, trauma, accident, poor posture, poor body mechanic, uh, infection, uh, inflammation, uh, overuse, uh, repetitive strain injury. What's the difference between fibrosis, scar tissue, uh, knot, and uh, trigger points? Um, uh, this is a very confusing topic and a lot of health practitioners either think that all the knots in the body are trigger points and as a practitioner they believe all the knots are fibrosis but reality is there's a combination of both so a healthcare provider need to know how to evaluate that I provide a special training on that because I cannot even explain it in the video we have to show it with palpate palpitation and I show that in, in the class but usually with the knot there's a combination of trigger points and fibrosis 
most of the time there's always fibrosis that's uh, predominantly trigger point it's less predominant than fibrosis that's from clinical experience and from treating a lot of patients that's what I have found but in order to learn the difference we have to I have to provide a special training for that to palpate and use ester and instrument actually to tell the difference so uh, I go over that during ester class What the trigger point symptoms? Uh, the symptoms of the trigger point could be muscle spasm, decreased uh, joint range of motion, um, joint pain, uh, decreased flexibility, uh, decreased muscle strength. Okay, so which patient uh, actually has a trigger points? Uh, that could happen with everybody. With majority of the injury from like jaw pains, sciatica, arthritis, uh, headaches, neck, back pain, fibromyalgia, uh, plantar fasciitis. Uh, when you look back to the healing cycle, it's part of healing. It's part of healing that our body built uh, or contractile tissue, which is actually called uh, trigger points, uh, could be uh, part of the source of the problem but usually there's a fascia resection, there's a fibrosis, a scar tissue, uh, there's a muscle spasm, and I, I, I dedicated uh, a, a video for each of those elements, how to treat it and how to evaluate it. Feel free to look at previous video to check how, um, how we treat those elements. Um, So currently, a healthcare provider use uh, massage, uh, dry needling, um, trigger point injections, uh, kinesio taping, and cross uh, taping application uh, for treating the uh, trigger point. So let's look at the studies on the, those techniques. There's actually a sample of studies. There's a lot of studies that actually find the same finding, but I'm just uh, going over a few of them now. So first, massage. Um, this is a systematic review. They looked at the massage therapy for neck and shoulder pain. Uh, it's a systematic review and meta-analysis. Uh, the study that's included in this study was that met the criteria for this study is 12 randomized controlled trials. And their conclusion is no evidence suggests that massage therapy was effective in improving functional status related to neck and shoulder pain. So there's no eff efficacy for massage therapy for improving functional, functional uh, uh, status. Uh, and this is one study. There's actually uh, a lot of study confirmed that uh, same finding. I have like at least seven systematic reviews come with the same exact solution that massage therapy is short-term temporary pain relief it's not a long term um, second is uh, dry needling so uh, this study is a systematic review they looked at the dry needling in subject with musculoskeletal trigger points in the lower quadrants so this study done in 2016 they reviewed six uh, uh, studies and they came up with this conclusion uh, that dry needling is effective in reducing pain associated with lower quadrant trigger points in the short term. However, the findings suggest that dry needling does not have a positive effect on functional, on function, quality of life, depression, range of motion, or strength. That's one systematic review. Another systematic review on the dry needling and uh, literature uh, review. So this is another uh, uh, literature review on dry needling. So they looked at dry needling with the implication for clinical practice guidelines. So in this study, they looked at uh, several studies and they conclude the following, that several studies have demonstrated intermediate or short-term improvement of pain and or disability by, uh, by targeting trigger points using in and out uh, techniques such as uh, pistoning. However, to date, no high quality long-term trials. Supporting in and out uh, needling techniques 
at exclusively musculoskeletal trigger point and the practice should therefore be questionable. So those reviews, they actually uh, uh, question the efficacy of dry needling for trigger points or even improving functional status for patient. Uh, so now we're going to look at uh, the, 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 the other approach for trigger points, which is trigger point injections. And it's used by healthcare provider to treat pain related to trigger points. So the systematic reviews, uh, they looked at the trigger point injection for chronic non-malignant musculoskeletal pain. Uh, systematic reviews, the, the, the study that met the criteria to, uh, to be included in this review, uh, 15, 15 randomized controlled trials. And this is their conclusion. The only advantage of injecting anesthet anesthetic uh, into trigger point may be to reduce the pain of needling process, which may not be in, insufficient benefits. So the only benefit they found when they looked at all the studies that it's actually an aesthetic effect on the needle. So there's no other effect. So what is the solution? Um, this is one of the things that um, before Aster I was struggled to treat effectively. And uh, you can watch my TEDx talk, how I discover Aster, and it was a starting with a trigger point uh, with random maneuver on my wife. And uh, through that experience, um, I discovered over 125 maneuver to actually uh, release trigger point and uh, fascia restrictions. But it's not only trigger point, there's a fascia restriction and that's what I have a special instrument to release superficial fascia and apparatic fascia and other deep instrument to release the epimycin, the premycin, and the endomycin. Feel free to look at other videos that I presented for uh, the fascia restriction and uh, fibrosis. So there's always uh, scar tissue, and that's why I came up with several instruments to release the scar tissue deep and superficial. But when you go back to the healing cycle I went over in the beginning of the video, it's not only trigger point, that treatment has to be holistic in nature. Uh, we have to treat the fibrosis, the scar tissue, the fascia restrictions, uh, the muscle spasm, the inflammation, uh, the ergonomic, the gait, the stress. Uh, so I went over all these elements uh, in, in, in previous video, which are conquering chronic pain. Uh, so feel free to check other videos, and I, uh, I went over how to implement uh, the holistic approach to treat uh, the source of the problem. Feel free to subscribe to my channel to get helpful tips on how to relieve pain. And if you are a healthcare provider and interested to be ASTER certified, uh, you can follow the link below. Uh, you will get information on how to register for Aster online class. Uh, there is over uh, 40 studies that support Aster treatment model, and also there is uh, over uh, 400 studies that utilize by Aster treatment. And feel free to check over more over 220 videos that most of them actually real treatment videos. Uh, we'll see you soon.